and close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. If you need a meditation word to stay with the breath, you can try Bhutto. It means awake. It's a quality we're trying to develop. You think but with the in-breath, toe with the out. And try to make your mind as alert as possible, both to what's going on in the breath and what's going on in your mind. If the mind is getting ready to slip off, try to breathe in a way that's especially interesting, especially riveting. Feels really good deep down inside. And the mind will be more inclined to want to stay. In other words, you have to look around. Even though we're sitting here with our eyes closed, you do have to look around, both to the breath and the mind. And when you're outside, of course, you want to look around and see what your actions are doing, where they're coming from, what impact they're having on yourself and on other people. It's this all-around gaze that enabled the Buddha to gain awakening, because he realized he wanted happiness, but also everybody else wanted happiness. And a lot of times the happiness of the world is something that if one person gains, somebody else has to lose. So we want to know if there's a happiness that doesn't involve gaining and losing or conflict. And he discovered that there was. It comes down to three principles, generosity, virtue, meditation. When you learn to take pleasure in generosity, of course the people around you benefit from what you give them. And you benefit from a more expansive mind. When you hold to the precepts, the people around you benefit because you're not harming them. And you gain a sense of self-esteem, self-respect, that you can say no to your harmful urges. And you're living in the world and you're not creating a lot of burdens for the world. And there's a sense of lightness, a sense of well-being, a sense of self-esteem that comes from that. And then when you meditate, you're the first one, of course, who benefits as the mind begins to settle down, have a sense of well-being right here. But if you're causing less trouble inside your mind, you're going to be causing less trouble for people around you. And you'll have more time to look around once your needs for happiness are taken care of. And you've got a happiness that you can depend on. There's no reason to take your frustration out on other people, because what's there to frustrate you? You found a sense of well-being inside that you can carry around with you. And your greed, aversion, and delusion don't roam around causing a lot of trouble. So we're looking for happiness that spreads its benefits around, doesn't harm anybody, and is actually good for the whole world. That ha kind of happiness is rare. So do your best to develop it. You develop it by looking around. When you want to do something, ask yourself, well, where does this desire come from? And if you were to act on it, what would the results be? That's called looking around. Look for the causes, look for the effects, and then decide what kind of effects you want, what kind of effects will be good in the long term. When you can take this long-term perspective, you find that you do things and say things and think things that you're happy that you did and said and thought, and getting the mind in a state of concentration where you feel good in the present moment helps you take that long-term perspective, otherwise you're hungry for something right now. And you'll take whatever you can get right now without any regard to the impact it's going to have on you or other people. So try to develop this state of mind. It feels at home with a breath here in the present moment. And you'll find that its goodness spreads around.